U.S. President Joe Biden says the hopes for a ceasefire now lay in the hands of designated terrorist group Hamas. Israelis have been cooperating. There's an offer out there that's rational. We don't know what we'll know in a couple days if it's going to happen. But we need the ceasefire. It comes a day after Vice President Kamala Harris, with a member of Israel's wartime cabinet, in a meeting as he came to Washington in defiance of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, as the Biden administration intensifies its efforts to push more humanitarian aid into war-battered Gaza. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky on Tuesday welcomed the International Criminal Court's arrest warrants for two top Russian commanders for suspected war crimes in Ukraine. VOA's Rick Pantaleo has more. Stefan Dejarek, spokesperson for United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres, said the water situation is worsening in Gaza, with more than 80 percent of households lacking access to clean water. Colleagues working on water sanitation and hygiene in Gaza are reporting extremely challenging conditions amid high level of displacement. Dejarek added that the lack of water is so severe that roughly 1,300 people on average are sharing a single shower. Rick Pantaleo, VOA News. French President Emmanuel Macron's comments on possibly sending NATO soldiers to Ukraine are pushing the world to the brink of nuclear war. Russia's Foreign Intelligence Service chief was quoted as saying on Tuesday. Last week, Macron opened the door to European nations sending troops to Ukraine, although he cautioned there was no consensus at the stage. The United States and key European allies later said they had no plans to send ground troops to Ukraine. This is VOA News. Haiti's embattled prime minister has landed in Puerto Rico as he tries to return to Haiti to quell a surge in violent gang attacks. Officials told the Associated Press Ariel Henry landed late Tuesday afternoon at an airport in the capital of San Juan. The official spoke on condition of amenity because they were not authorized to confirm his arrival. Henri was expected to travel to the Dominican Republic later to fly to Haiti, but the government of the Caribbean nation closed its air borders as gangs in Haiti continue to escalate their attacks on key targets such as prisons and the main international airport. Voters in 15 U.S. states cast their ballots on Super Tuesday, the biggest voting day of the primary season. Reuters correspondent Chris Dignam reports. Donald Trump is aiming for another dominant performance against Nikki Haley, his lone challenger for the Republican presidential nomination, while President Joe Biden is expected to win Tuesday's Democratic contests easily. The results in North Carolina will be closely watched for signs of each candidate's strength, as it's one of the potential battleground states that could decide the November general election. North Carolina allows voters who are unaffiliated with a party to participate in any primary they choose. That could boost Nikki Haley's performance, given her relative strength with independent voters compared to Trump, who faces four criminal trials. Trump has pleaded not guilty in every case and has called the prosecutions politically motivated. Reuters correspondent Chris Dignam. Britain's Princess of Wales will appear in June for a royal ceremony, her first confirmed official duty since surgery. AP correspondent Charles de Ledesma reports. Officials say Kate will attend a Trooping the Connor ceremony in June. This would be her first confirmed major official duty since undergoing abdominal surgery. Kate, Prince William's wife, has been out of the public eye since January, when palace officials announced she was being admitted to a private London hospital for a planned medical procedure. They did not provide more details, but said she would not return to public duties until after Easter. The Ministry of Defence says Kate, who's 42, will inspect soldiers on parade during the ceremony on June 8. Charles de la Desma, London. The Philippines summoned China's deputy chief of mission in Manila on Tuesday to protest at what it called aggressive actions by Chinese naval forces against a resupply mission for Filipino troops stationed on a South China Sea shoal. Manila's South China Sea Task Force said Philippine vessels carrying out the routine mission to the 2nd Thomas Shoal were harassed and blocked by Chinese maritime militia and Coast Guard ships on Tuesday.
Thank you for watching. Can you do me a favor? Please leave a comment in the comment section below. That would really help. Thank you and see you again soon.